This is orcophony. We're putting the orc back in the orchestra. Orcophony is a medieval fantasy sample library, but instead of heroic warriors, it's for sneaky gits. There's a lot here, and goblins are greedy and impatient, so let's start with the parts which load multiple sounds at once. The gobotron is sort of like a mellotron, containing various sounds from string and wind instruments and a vocal. At the more normal end of things, it does dirty pads. <laughs> sounds creates very strange textures. And it can do deep drones. And this particular combination of a wind instrument playing notes and a string instrument making wind noises is sort of vaguely like a shakuhachi. Because orcs aren't much for fair one-on-one -on -one combat and prefer to attack in groups, there is the combi harpa instrument, which basically lets you play four taggle harpa type instruments at once. <laughs> Textures patch collects all the rattling drums, scraped antlers, shaken bones, and all the other atmospheres from the percussion section, which are looked for infinite sustain, and lets four of them be selectable and blendable. Now to get to the individual sounds you heard there. First up, and relatively normal, the Suka Bugoraiska is an old relative of the violin with a wide neck and strings fingered from the side instead of pressing into the fingerboard. Basically, it's the bold lyre version of a violin, and you can think of it as a fiddle with a bright, folky sound. <laughs> Like everything here, have a little reverb on the track because the recordings are quite dry. The techniques are key switchable, but all key switch instruments are also separated into single articulation patches, more than a hundred of them, if you prefer to organize your tracks that way. For the Soka, the techniques include pizzicato and even seagulls. The Suka and many others also has a unison control which uses the transposition trick to emulate a section of three Sukas. This sounds so nice I just want to leave it on all the time, but to be fair I'll leave it off for the other instruments with just one exception. Next up is the Tagal Harpa, another bowed lyre, this one rectangular in shape and usually played by bowing a melody note and a drone at the same time. Because the drones are fixed, this is really only usable in a few keys, so we added the transposition control which lets you shift the whole instrument over. And for comparison, without transposition. Because drone and melody are played together, we sampled the long notes with and without vibrato and also sampled playing across three strings at once for double drones. The Tagal Harpa played one string at a time works more like a violin with a limited range, and vibrato here is fully controllable. And we even tried flautando. The Strak Harpa is basically the same as the Tagal Harpa, but its strings are horsehair instead of gut. The sounds much rougher and tuning less stable, so this is basically the Tagal Harpa with extra orcishness. 
Played one string at a time, it's basically impossible to use much bow weight with the very flat bridge, so it's a very different and interesting sound, and we actually managed to get a pretty wide range out of it. There is also a bass tagle harpa, which is longer and more or less lives in the cello range. Also horsehair strings on this one. And just how screechy do these horsehair strings get when playing near the bridge? Well... Then, leaving the bowed lyres for things closer to the violin family, we have Basse Guralske, an old three-string bass fiddle from about a hundred years ago. The tone really varies from note to note, and some notes have strong buzzes, so this is also very goblin-y. And there is a jet articulation. It's always a fun thing to sample, but takes a more modern bow than the bowed lyres used. Then the same bass we sampled for vengeful bass and meat bass, but made more orcish by tuning it down a fourth, one string at a time. This allows it to hit extra low drones and thumps, with this being the lowest pitch actually sampled. And some falls from higher pitches. Tuning down one string at a time also puts the string an octave below the next string, which lets us do some octave techniques. And extra nasty tremolos. Now, tuned this low, it's not an easy instrument to play, and there were plenty of flub notes and extra takes needed to get enough usable round robins. So I picked the most amusing flub for each note and put all those together into a special articulation. The deep sounds are a good time to turn the unison knob up again. We also recorded bass with a drone and a melody string for a sort of contrabass tagle harpa. Next up are the plucked strings with an Irish style octave mandolin tuned down a major second, which might technically make it a major ninth mandolin, but anyway, tuned down it's a little rattly and buzzy. Then we sort of have an electric guitar, but because goblins are way too disorganized and lazy to maintain an electric grid, we didn't have a way to plug it into record, so in true orchestra spirit we put it down on top of a cajon, tuned the remaining five strings that haven't been changed since the 1980s to drop C, and went to town. There are no harps here, because harps are for elves and so are flutes. On the other hand, bagpipes are the most orcish of wind instruments, and we have two sets here. The first is a replica of a Teutonic design with double reeds. We sample the drones and chanter separately, so you can play with one drone or multiple drones in any key. Leave the drone unplayed, and you basically get a big double reed horn like a warped zurna. This one has both controllable vibrato, which applies to the chanter but not the drones, and also sampled vibrato, though the latter only works on some notes in real life, so the other notes will default to the non-vibrato articulation. But it's such a unique sound that we couldn't resist sampling it. The second set of bagpipes is a Slavic version, with one drone, single reeds, and more clarinet-like tone. This one's got plenty of squawks, squeaks, and general instability, so crank up the release noises, play a single note, and it does a pretty good imitation of a bird call. And it has a bigger selection of inflating and deflating noises. 
As the first of the bagless winds, we have a horn made of the real horn of an ibex antelope. Unlike signal horns, it's got finger holes and is a playable instrument. The real thing is diatonic, but the samples can be played chromatically and the sound works surprisingly well for jazzy stuff. Some techniques sound downright hideous in an awesome way. Then we have a bass trombone in F, even bigger and more orcish than your typical bass trombone. It's also recorded with a special mouthpiece, which makes it sound like a didgeridoo. The final playable wind instrument that Uffy Clay they rarely played these days is pretty much a metal serpent with keys. Then we have some whistles. These are limestone rocks which naturally erode into shapes which whistle when blown into from the right angle and an acorn shell. When somebody says, hey, I got these rocks I collected in the forest and I use them as whistles, I do not pass up the opportunity to sample that. And they make pretty cool bird noises too. Speaking of sound effects, we also have vocals. This female vocal includes no singing, but you do get a massive variety of growls, grunts and stuff. Plus a great selection of evil laughs. Turning up the unison control here gives you three variations of the same laugh at once. For lots of goblins, you can just mash multiple keys at once, and the randomized pan and randomized pitch controls help create the illusion of a group of various sizes in various locations. There's also a somewhat more predictable male vocal along similar lines. I am this goblin. With evil laughs, of course, with inspirations ranging from Phantom of Crankor to Beavis. <laughs> There's also a sung female vocal, which is hoarse and growly in the lower register and cleans up going higher. <laughs> It's really nice with unison. I'm going to switch like that off and play just one chord. And sure, there are evil laughs. <laughs> Then, because goblins love hitting things, there is a massive variety of percussion. The drums with various beaters and techniques. There's a drum my great-grandfather made in the late 1940s from a sieve that my great-grandmother had for sifting flour. Techniques here also include spinning the metal jingles to make a nasty noise, rubbing the drum heads and rattling stuff around. Some of this is looped for the infinite sustain and found in the texture patch, and some of this is shorter. That little epic knob adds an extra copy of the overhead microphones tuned an octave down so it sounds extra low, plus the natural room reverb is twice as long. Symbols range from the proper China symbol to the nipple from the center of a shield. Earth is a term for a bunch of animal parts, from cow thief to seashells, wooden stuff including carved idol, and rocks used as percussion. Huge variety.
Then we have medals. Loaded weapons, armor, and tools for the occasions when an evil wizard forces orcs to do actual work. Now we weren't sure whether the stupidest thing we could possibly sample would be as stupid as a bag of rocks, a bag of hammers, or a bag of doorknobs, so we sampled all three, all used as heavyweight shakers. But what if you can't remember where you put all the stuff you looted and all you have left to hit is yourself and other orcs? Well, of course, that's body percussion. This has a pretty different set of controls, there's two goblins that have all the techniques recorded, plus four more under the extras hitting themselves in the thighs and forearms. And last, and not only not least, but literally largest, we have one of the few deep sampled dumpsters in the world. This, like the Ibex horn bass trombone and Ophicleida, was recorded by Versolian Studios in the Americas. If you like it and you don't have any friends, tell an enemy.